Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be uh, taking a break from from the, the flip car and we're going to be doing a little bit of maintenance on the Titan today uh, in preparations for a little trip that we'll be taking soon. Um, so we just yesterday went in for our 10,000 mile maintenance included in uh, the maintenance package for this truck uh, when I purchased it. Uh, so basically what it comes down to is yesterday when we were dropping it off and doing the paperwork, they asked me if I wanted fuel filters changed and of course you want to maintain it as best you can for longevity and I immediately assumed that it was included in the maintenance package, which it was not. Um, then asked for a price and they wanted to charge me $290 for fuel filters. So I rejected because why not? It's really not that hard to do uh, and doesn't really take that long. Definitely not worth the the $290 that they were going to charge me for it. And plus, right here, I did go with the Nissan filters. I was there. It was just easy. Uh, I didn't really have time to wait uh, from Amazon or wherever to ship them. But filters from from the dealer cost, uh, I think the little one was 30 and the bigger one was 50 So after taxes I'm about $90 into it um, which is a huge savings for you do uh, do it yourself guys out there um, they do come each come with a a new o-ring that goes around I think this one goes on the cover and this one also I believe goes on the cover of the parts will take off and they both also come with uh, their own instructions so it's really pretty simple Even for those guys who have never done it before, like myself, um, I just did a little bit of research uh, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. And of course, with these diesel systems, you do need to prime the fuel system to purge all the air once you have completed the the filter change. Um, and I just want to make sure that that I knew exactly what I was doing, uh, so we we don't end up running into any issues later on. I am going to just check the, the instructions real quick just to see exactly what what they say to make sure that there isn't something special to the to this Cummins or whatever, what have you. And if there is, I will most definitely be sharing that with you guys. Alright guys, so first we're going to start with this filter, which is uh, definitely the one that goes underneath the truck. This one, obviously the one in the engine bay. Um, first thing we need to do is drain the fuel out of the housing. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be starting with the filter that's up underneath the truck. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to drain the fluid out of the housing. Let's get under there and see it. See it. It is... Is that little shield? It's back there. A little too far forward here. Adjust my stuff. So what you're gonna need is a one and one eighth inch for the little nut that's right here on the bottom of your fuel filter housing. Um, we're also gonna need to uh, first purge it, or first uh, drain it. So we are going to rotate this counterclockwise. Let's get this lined up a little better. Rotate this counterclockwise. And that's it right there. We'll let that go until all of it has drained out. Um, 
I love the smell of diesel. Um, and once that has drained, we will be then disconnecting this plug that's right here uh, so that this can rotate freely. I may also loosen these three bolts up here, those three there, so that when uh, this housing is rotating, this um, connector is not going to hit on it. So I'll loosen it just enough to be able to get it out of the way. Um, so let's do that while it's draining. And for all you guys who are worried, I did disconnect both um, negative termo terminals for uh, each battery, or both, both terminals for this truck has two batteries. Um, because we are disconnecting this connection right here, I do like to disconnect the battery. It's just a good, uh, a good kind of fail safe for connections like this one, airbag connections, etc. Um, so I never got to undoing these other ones. So let's do that while it's still. It's basically done draining, so let's close that up. Just rotate that clockwise, and that's tight again. And so we just want to get these loose enough that we can get that filter housing around see you got a lot more well now we got a lot more play in there we'll be able to we can take those out if we need to but I don't think we will let's take this connection there's just a little button on this connection right here right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's a little button. You just press that little button and it should pull right out of there. There we go. We've got this all locked back up. Um, let's start loosening it. Thank <laughs> you. 
let's see. Basically, what we got going on is, see it with the lighting. There are these little grooves that the cover are in. So basically all you gotta do is rotate this little cover um, clockwise to the housing. And it looks like it should come right off of there. I'm sorry, this is the cover to the... What do we got here? Make sure all of them are off. This should come right out. There we go. And we will do a side-by-side -side comparison for you guys. So next what we want to do is we're going to take this housing over to the bench with the filter and you guys First thing we're going to do is, so we don't forget it, we're going to replace this little O-ring here. So we're going to take this off, make sure this doesn't fall off because it's got some diesel in it still. Toss that there, take our new one, set it down, and it goes right into this groove here. Perfect. Let's just double check. We'll make sure we do everything correct the first time first time. Alright, so that's in. Here is our side by side. of the and new filter. Look at that. That's after, I think the truck has 9,200 miles on it. Um, yeah, so there's probably still a little bit of life left in that filter. Uh, but I'd like to, I'm gonna try to stick up with the, main, uh, and the maintenance on this thing. And whenever the oils get changed, oil gets changed, we will be doing the filters as well. Um, so let's get this cartridge or this filter back into the housing. We'll get it screwed in. Um, I got to do a little reading. I think there's an orientation that makes it a little bit easier when we put it back on so that the connection in the back is pointing the right direction. Guys, we got the housing, or we've got the filter in there. You can see we've got it locked in. Oh, you should be able to see that. We've got it locked in to uh, the housing. One thing I did forget to mention is that you do want to lubricate your O-ring in some fresh diesel fuel. So I just used this. It's all brand new. Uh, that just came out of the housing. So, what we're gonna do now is just put this back in. Look up. Let me see. Um, yeah. So basically, you will know exactly 
if you've got it in the right spot or not because the connection at the end will be in the correct orientation. Um, That's it right there. We got our clip. Our orientation is good. The gap I was talking about is. Um, let's see what we got there. Just to focus. No, there's not enough light, but it's basically the top of the uh, filter housing going into the the actual. metal part that it screws to so it's basically this those two or I guess it would be the where the o-ring seals to is it's just under that so we're just making sure there's no gap and it's it is tight um, we'll check for leaks once we get the truck started but of course it being a pressurized fuel system we need to make sure we purge the system let's get this plugged up while we're down here give it a little push pull push so basically push it till it clicks just give it a little pull make sure it doesn't come out and then finish by pushing it back in again that's just a good practice um, we use it we use it in the automotive industry all the time which is what I do um, but it's a good practice to get used to so while we're down here we will uh, tighten these guys up Ideally, we don't have to crawl back under here again. All right, guys, we got the lower filters all done. Connection is hooked up. Um, the shield is retightened. Now we're moving on to the other filter, which is right here. So let's get this taken off. Nope, sorry, that's the wrong direction. in the system it's still pretty hot so I'm trying not to get burned here although I have waited probably an hour hour and a half but it doesn't help that it's mid 90s here so Filters 
it's looking pretty dirty. Like I said, once again, we'll take it over here and we will compare it to uh, the, the new filter, which, look at that. That is night and day. She was ready to be changed. Um, so let's get that in. Um, like I said, same thing. You want to make sure that you lube up your, your seal really good before you put it back on. Um, let's get that put in. change these o-rings while you're in here. There's no sense in reusing an old one if they're going to provide a new one. Make sure that it's fit right here in the groove where it's supposed to. We're going to slap this right back on top. This orientation does not matter. There's no sensors. There's no none of that. Can't get it to take. Same thing here, we want to make sure that she's nice and sealed, we don't want to have any leaks. There we go, nice and tight. Um, so next, all that's left is uh, retighten the batteries and then make sure that we prime that system. Um, let me just wash up my hands because I don't really want diesel inside the truck. So we'll, we'll get everything buttoned up, get cleaned up, and then we'll show you how to prime the system. I wanted to mention, in case I didn't earlier, uh, those that were under there for the shield that are uh, 12 millimeter. Uh, bolts. Um, so we've got our batteries hooked back up. We got our filter all changed in there. Next is to not spill the diesel fuel. Um, next is to grab the keys and prime the system. So per Nissan's instructions, what it's what it wants you to do is come in here and you're going to press the start button 
twice with your foot not on the brake. So do not press in the brake, but just start this twice to get the fuel pump going. And it says wait 30 seconds. Um, I'm going to do this probably um, two or three times. Um, I don't know if you can hear it or not, but it is uh, it is working. I'm not sure if you can hear the fuel pump working in there. What it's doing is it's filling that housing full of full of fuel and purging the air at the same time. Uh, so as you can see, we're still getting the low fuel pressure light. So what we're going to do is we're just going to wait it out 20-30 um, seconds uh, and then if this light does not go away what we're going to do is we are going to do it a second time until this light has gone out. Um, so basically it's going to purge itself, it's going to prime itself, you just got to make sure that you do this before you start it. The last thing you want to do is start it without the fuel system being primed because then you're just going to get air bubbles and it's going to be a big, big headache. Um, so I hear that the fuel pump has stopped. I'm still getting the light, so I'm going to turn it off and I'm going to do the same process again. Uh, press the button once, press the button twice. Once again, it's working down there. So there we go. I'm not seeing that warning anymore. Um, let's close the door so get rid of that warning. Um, so I'm not getting the fuel, low fuel pressure light anymore or warning anymore. So we should be good to go to start up the truck. I just want to wait until the fuel pump is done cycling through right now. Um, I can still hear it going. Once it's done this cycle, we're going to turn everything off, shut everything down, and then we're going to start it back up and we're going to check for leaks just to make sure everything is sealed properly. Alright, so there it goes. It's done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut everything down, press the button. That turns everything back off. So now we're going to press, depress the brake and start it up. Started up, no problem. Now we're just gonna get out, check it for some leaks. Everything under here. I don't see anything. We're gonna let it. Obviously, we're gonna let it run for a few minutes, uh, just to make sure. We'll let it get up to temp. Right there alone, just that, whatever, it probably would have taken me 30 minutes without filming it. Top, super easy. That saved me $200 right there. Uh, so like I said, it was 90 for the part, for the two filters. Um, and they wanted to charge me something like $270, I think it was, $290. So 
pretty much $200 savings right there. And it could have been more had I not uh, gotten the filters from Nissan. Had I done it online, I've seen where some people got it for, could have got it for 50 bucks um, or found it for $50. I haven't looked myself, but there you go. That is all done. Let's take one last check inside, make sure there's no lights. The only warning light on is for the door open, so we're good to go there. And we'll do one last check for any fuel dropping. Excellent. And that's it. If you guys like the content, please subscribe, uh, share, like, comment. Um, I'm pretty new to this, so please I'm, uh, take it easy on me. I'm still getting used to the filming and the editing, so bear with me. Um, but yeah, if you want to see more, uh, hit that, uh, turn that bell on, and, and we're going to be doing stuff like this all the time. So, uh, thank you guys, and we will uh, catch you in the next episode.